I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about volume by cylindrical shells. In problem number 35, we'd like to use the shell method to find the volume of the region bounded by y equals x squared, x equals 1, and y equals 0 when it's revolved around the line um, y equals negative 2. Okay, so these are interesting problems where we're revolving a region up about a line that is not x equals 0 and it's not y equals 0. In other words, it's not the x-axis, it's not the y-axis, it's some other line. And how do we deal with things that are revolved around things that are not the axes? Well, you'll notice that when we did problems that things were revolved around the axis, typically the, the radius, that r of x piece, is either x or it's y, depending on what we're integrating with respect to. When we do other lines, typically that radius is not just x, or it's not just y, and we have to make an adjustment for the fact that we're not revolving around an axis. So let's see how this plays out as we're setting up our integral. We have to be aware that we're not revolving around an axis anymore. Let's see how it works. So first let's draw our region. So our region is y equals x squared. Uh, we've got x is equal to 1. And we've got y is equal to 0, which is otherwise known as the x-axis. So we've got this little piece right here. Now, that little piece is going to be revolved around the line y equals negative 2, which is this is y equals negative 2, and we're going to take that region and spin it around that line. When I do, I'll get something that looks sort of like this. where there's a hole through the middle of this object. Uh, and so it's a fairly thin, <coughs> semi-circular object. Okay, so we get a feel for what this thing looks like. Now how do we find the volume? How do we set up the integral that's going to get the job done for us? So here's what we'll do. Uh, same as we've always done, volume is still equal to the integral from a to b of 2 pi r of x times h of x as long dx, as long as we're integrating with respect to x. If we're integrating with respect to y, then we need to change each of these to y. So which is it? Is it x or is it y? We figure that out by looking at a typical slice that would create a shell. Okay, our typical slice that would create a shell in this case, since we're spinning this direction, is we'd have to draw a horizontal slice and that would make us a shell. So a horizontal slice is going to cut the y-axis, not the x-axis. So as soon as I say, oh, wait a second, these slices are slicing the y-axis and not the x, then we go in here and change everything and we see, oh, this is going to be a function of y, this is going to be a function of y, and I'm integrating with respect to y. Now everything's good, we just need to uh, put in the pieces to integrate this thing. So let's rewrite. This is the integral from A to B, but where do I start cutting and where do I stop cutting? Well, this we know is zero, and I'm integrating this up one more unit, which is one. So in this case, I'm integrating from the y value zero to the y value one of two pi. Now we need r of y. And that's where I need to be a little bit careful. So if I'm setting up here at a typical point y, how far am I from the center of the shell? Well, it's not y 
Because Y just gets me back to the axes. Y, y is this distance. I want this distance. So it's Y plus an additional 2. So this is, the radius is not going to be Y anymore. It's Y plus 2. And then I need to say, okay, and now what's the height? Well, the height is still the top function minus the bottom function. The top function is, uh, that's x equals 1, or just 1, minus the bottom function. And the bottom function, this was y equals x squared. But I need to solve that for x. <coughs> Uh, because I need it in y, so this would be x is equal to the square root of y. So I'm going to subtract the square root of y dy. Okay, let's uh, get this into a little bit nicer form. Uh, I can pull out the 2 pi, uh, and then I've got integral from 0 to 1 of, let's multiply this out. So if I FOIL this out, so to speak, I get y minus y times the square root of y is y to the 3 over 2. Then I get 2 times 1, which is plus 2. And then I get 2 times negative square root of y, which is minus 2y to the 1 half. Dy. And notice I put all of this into a power form. I didn't write any square roots of y, just because I'm about to use the power rule to take the antiderivative of each. So let's take an antiderivative. So I get 2 pi times antiderivative of y is y squared over 2. Antiderivative of negative y to the 3 halves is negative y to the 5 halves divided by 5 halves, which is the same as multiplying by 2 fifths. Antiderivative of 2 is 2y. And the antiderivative of negative 2y to the 1 half is negative, well, y is going to be to the 3 halves. And then I still have this 2 multiplied by the reciprocal of 3 halves, which is 2 thirds. So I have 4 thirds all of that evaluated from 0 to 1. Okay, let's plug in the 1. When I do, I get 2 pi times 1 half minus 2 fifths plus 2 minus 4 thirds. And when I plug in 0, I get 0, 0, 0, and 0. So that's it. If I combine those guys, I am done. Uh, what is a common denominator for all of these guys? I've got a 2 on the bottom, a 5 on the bottom, and a 3 on the bottom. 15 won't do it, but 30 will. So let's get a common denominator of 30 for all of these guys. When I do, this is 15 over 30. This guy would be uh, minus 12 over 30. Uh, then I get uh, plus 60 over 30. And finally, uh, minus 40 over 30. Okay, let's combine it all together. I get 2 pi times, what do we got? 40 minus 30 is 20, plus 15 is 35 minus 12 would be 23. So this is 23 over 30. <clears throat> Let's make sure I agree with that. 3 plus 20, yeah, 23. Then we've got uh, the 2 and the 30 can cancel and give me a 15 on the bottom, which means I'd get 23 over 15 pi for my answer. And so the volume of this shape that we get when we revolve this little region around the line y equals negative 2 should be 23 pi over 15.